this past week in class, we also covered painting glue strength so that we could shape what part of the object fractures and what part doesn't. I have a video from about a year ago on my YouTube channel. Uh, it is this uh, right here, RBD glued object. So this video is basically an update to that because that in that video we use the paint node which has been depreciated in Houdini 18. So I wanted to just cover the new method for painting glue strength since we don't have a paint node any longer. So what I have here is a, a network that's already been set up, a DOP network. So what I did is I created a box and I did an ISO offset, a scatter and a Volnoy fracture. So this is a volume fracture, a volume Volnoy fracture. I added an out null. And then from there, instead of making this just a rigid body, an RBD object, I use the RBD glued object, this shelf button instead. So this is going to set up the glue constraints for us automatically. Whereas I, I have another video where we learn how to set up glue constraints from scratch. Now, in order to use the RBD glued objects button, one thing to keep in mind is that this, the object that you're going to glue can't be part of a simulation already. If we've already made it an RBD object, you'll get an error message. So this shelf tool, the RBD glued object shelf tool can only be used if there is no simulation. So in this case, I already had a rest and assemble and adopt, which typically are generated when you do an RBD object, then we would get an error. So this, none of this would have to exist. So again, what I did is basically uh, right here is what I had prior to this. And then I clicked on the RBD glued objects button and that made the packed geometry using the assemble and the rest and the DOP. But because I used the RBD glued object shelf tool, it also generated these additional nodes here. So what these are doing is the connect adjacent pieces. This is generating the constraints. Uh, we also discussed in class how what, what the, con the connect adjacent pieces node is doing is exactly the same thing as what automatically comes out of the Volnoy fracture constraint geometry output. So we could just use this instead of this node. So if we move over to the DOP network, we will see that we have the glue constraint relationship node and the constraint network. Again, those, we, we learned how to set those up manually in another video tutorial. But using the RBD glued object shelf tool also generates a merge node and then also a, whoops, a SOP solver node. So by default, our glue constraint is set to 10,000. And if I play the simulation just to make sure it runs, we see it does, and it just breaks off a little bit on the bottom there. So what I could do is I can paint the strength and decide to help decide what parts will break and what parts won't. And we do that over in the geometry network. So if I come back up to the geometry, up to the object level, go into the geometry node, I'm going to place this right after the connect adjacent pieces. Now, again, the previous method for doing this was using a paint node, which paints a color attribute. And then we would have to promote that color from the point level because all paint resides at the point level and the glue constraint is, a, is at the primitive level. We can even see that right here where it says constraint name and then it says primitive. So we need to paint at the, or we had to paint at the vertex level, then promote it to the primitive level. Then we needed to add an attribute create node to generate the strength attribute. Well, the great thing about this new node, which is called attribute paint, is that we can just tell it to paint strength directly instead of having to paint color and then convert color to strength. So that's what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna right click in here and go to attribute and choose attribute paint. Okay, uh, you'll have to pardon me for just one second here. I actually just paused the video and restarted it. The powers of editing probably makes it so that you wouldn't even notice that, but um, I started this video in Houdini 17.5, and so when I went to right-click, 
the attribute paint was not there. <laughs> right here it is. I'm now in Houdini 18. So what I did is I booted up 18 and kind of I tried to line everything back up to where we were. So um, I just wanted to mention that though. So back to what we were doing, uh, right clicking in here, I am going to add the attribute paint. And I'm gonna put that right after the connect adjacent pieces right here. So now in this attribute paint, I can come in and tell it what I would like to paint. Let's see if I can open this up so these things aren't cut off quite so much. So I'm gonna to go to the attributes tab and the attribute that I want to, to paint is strength. So I'm gonna type that in, strength. Now that has to, that it has to be spelled precisely because the strength attribute, this is communicating with the strength attribute that we have over in the DOP network for the glue constraint relationship node. And then what I wanna paint here, I could actually paint color. So you see how this has replaced the old color node because I could paint color. That wouldn't be efficient though, because if I painted color, I would then have to convert the color to the strength attribute. So strength is just a float value meaning it as a whole number with decimal places. So I'm gonna say, let's skip over the whole color conversion, which is what we had to do in the previous version of Houdini. And now I can just say paint strength directly. And I'm gonna paint it with a float value. So if I come over here to my brush, I have a foreground float and a background float. So what we typically do is make a very strong value for the foreground color, and that will be where the glue holds together and the background color will be at zero where it won't hold together at all. Or I could vary these to get varying levels of glue strength. So the way we would paint then is come over to our object. Uh, I'm gonna put my display flag here on the attribute paint. And if I zoom in on it, we can see the, the constraint network itself right there. And I have a volume brush. There's actually a lot of different types of brushes we could use here. So if I wanted to make all of the constraints weak by default, I could click fill and I could come over here and middle click on the object to fill it with the background color. And then I could come in and start painting with my foreground color. So I'm gonna just increase my brush size. Oops, oh, I still have it on fill, sorry. I'm gonna put it back to volume now. Now I have a volume brush. And if I start to paint here, oh, I might not be able to see it. If you can't see the paint, uh, you can turn on the visualize button right here. That should bring it on. So now it popped on. And the red areas are where I'm painting a strength of 100. And the purple areas are the background value of zero. So again, I can paint the background color by just using my middle mouse button here to paint that back out in certain spots. So I've added more strength here on this one side and left the rest of it open. Now, the other thing that we have to do though, is we need we do need to promote this because attribute paint, like all paint tools, is working on the vertex. It's a vertex paint tool, essentially. Since our glue constraints are at the primitive level, we need to promote the strength attribute from the point level to the primitive level. So I need to add one more node here after this. So the node that I need to add is the attribute promote. So I'll go back, I'll right click and go back to the attribute menu and choose attribute promote and place that in here. And I want to promote the strength attribute. I can select it from this drop list right here. It's coming in from the attribute paint right above it. So it should see it. It's a little bit cut off on my video, but this is strength. So the strength attribute and I'm promoting it from the point level up to the primitive level. And now that will be fed over to the constraint network that's in the DOP network. So again, I've painted this area to be strong and the other area to be weak. Before I go to simulate, to look at my simulation, we need to put our display flag back on the DOP import because that's where the simulation is coming in. And I could check my strength over here in the DOP network on the glue constraint right there is set to 10,000. So let's see what happens when we're combining our painted glue strength with this strength value. So if I play it, we see it essentially multiplies the values. 
And see how this is the area that I painted right there. So that's staying together now. And the area that has a glue value of zero is falling right apart. So it actually matters what this strength value is. So if I bring the, 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 this strength value down here, or attribute down, let's see if, what happens. Oh, it does fall apart, okay. I just wanted to make sure. My inclination was that the, this strength is multiplied by the other strength, and it is. So if I set this to one, that means that the incoming glue strength is gonna be multiplied by one. And if we go back to our geometry network and look at our attribute paint, our foreground color is 100 and our background color is zero. So if I keep the strength value over here in the DOP network at one, it's one times 100. So that means my strongest glue constraint, constraint is only 100 and that's not enough to hold this together. So if I make it 10, I've now increased the, the strongest values to 1000 and that should help a little bit, but it's probably still gonna fall apart quite a bit. See, one little chunk stays together. But then if I make this 100, so now it's will be 10,000, I believe. Now that piece holds together a little more. And I could even go up really high. So the default value is 10,000. So 10,000 times 100, we, that's definitely enough strength to hold that painted side together when it, it hits the ground. So just be aware that this strength value in the glue constraint relationship is a, you could think of it basically as a multiplier to the value that you've painted in your attribute paint, in this case, 100. So I could make this 10,000 and then make it one over in the glue constraint relationship and I would end up with you know, the, basically the same output. So I just wanted to do this update video to show how the attribute paint is now used to paint glue strength since we have the color node being depreciated. So again, just to review quickly here, I did attribute paint. I am painting a strength attribute. And then I need to promote that strength attribute from point to primitive level. And then that should work properly in our glue constraint network over in the uh, DOP node.